Abram believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness, Genesis 15, 6. This is a verse worth memorizing. This is one worth knowing by heart. I found it at least eight times quoted in the New Testament. I'm thinking if it's quoted that often, it must be pretty stinking important. You know what I'm saying? Of course the whole Bible is important. But why is this verse quoted one time, two times, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times, eight times? Because it's very, 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 very important. The just shall live by faith is just as important, and it's quoted several times as well. Abram believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. This verse is the heart of the Bible. This is the heart of the good news, the heart of the gospel. This is the message that Jesus was proclaiming to everybody. Salvation comes by faith. Justification. Abram believed God, and it gave it to him as credit for righteousness. Abram was made righteous in God's eyes because of his faith. That's what it's saying. Abram's faith made him right with God. Faith is the key to getting right with God. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. My lesson this morning is called the key to being right with God. Is there a more important lesson I could give? That's everything right there. So I don't want you to leave this morning without understanding this key. It's repeated again in different words throughout the Bible. Here's one of the main places, Ephesians 2, verses 8 through 10. For it's by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it's the gift of God. Not by works, so that no one can boast. So Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 say God saves us by grace, one. God does not save us by works, two. Very straightforward. It is by grace you are saved through faith, not of works. So nobody can brag about it. It would be great if you emptied out your banking account and adopted ten orphans and took care of them for the rest of their lives. But that will get you no closer to getting into heaven than somebody who robs a bank. Because works is not the process by which we get to heaven. Faith, and faith alone, is what gets us into heaven. Faith alone gets us right with God, but real faith is never alone. That's the second side of the coin. Real faith is never alone. Real faith has trust, Romans 4, 5. Real faith comes with obedience, Romans 6, 46. Real faith has repentance, Acts 17, 30 and 31. Real faith produces righteous living, 1 John 3, 6. Real faith produces good deeds, James chapter 2. Faith alone will get you right with God, but faith is never alone. Not real faith. In our culture, and it was the same in the days of Jesus, at least amongst the Greeks, and I'm sure that influenced a lot of the Jews, that faith or belief is an intellectual thing. How many of you believe somebody landed on the moon back in the 60s? Let me see your hand. Yeah, I believe it. So what? Affects nothing in my life whatsoever. How many of you believed Christopher Columbus sailed on a boat? Let me see your hands. I believe it. Affects my life no, not, not whatsoever. How many of you believe in billionaires? Affects my life not whatsoever. How many of you believe that if this building was on fire, you'd get out? Now, those of you who get out, it affects your life whatsoever. Those of you who stay, what's the point? You with me? That's the point the scripture's trying to make. Faith is not just something you do in your head, it's something you do with your hands and your heart, sometimes your feet. Faith involves all of you, not just this part. And scripture goes out of its way, backwards and forwards, to make that point. It is by grace you've been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it's a gift of God. Not of works, so no one can boast. Look at the next verse. Pull it up on the screen. Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's workmanship, 
created in Christ Jesus to do good works. So as soon as he tells us we can only be saved by faith, he flips around and says us, but we're saved to do good things. We're saved only by faith. But faith is never alone. That's the point of the scripture. James chapter 2, he does a whole chapter on it. Let me read to you the heart of the chapter. What good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds, no good works to go with that faith? Can such faith save him? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. And one of you says to him, go, I wish you well, keep warm and well fed. But does nothing about his physical needs. What good is it? What good is it? Well, it's no good. In the same way, faith by itself, if it's not accompanied by actions, is dead. So James identifies two types of faith. There's the dead faith, which is the head faith. It's the head that believes but doesn't do anything. And then there's the living faith. That's the head, heart, and hands faith. Two types of faith, but only one's alive. Well, I'm going to the nursery to buy a new tree. There's two trees there, a dead one and a living one. Let me see, which one do I want? Give me a minute. It's stupid. Head faith is worthless. It's dead. It's worthless. It's got to be in your head. And it's got to be in your heart. And it comes out through your hands. Faith alone gets us right with God. But real faith is never alone. Abram's faith was real. And it made him right with God. It was so real that when God says, I want you to move, and I'm not telling you yet where you're going, just head north, he did. Well, head west, north. And he did. And in a couple chapters, God's going to say, go kill your son, Isaac, who hasn't been born yet because he's still waiting. If he only knew that after he was going to be born, God said to go kill him, he might have prayed something different that day. But you'll see that's not the case. And his faith is going to cause him to reach out to kill his son. Now we're going to answer that. All those questions that are buzzing through your mind about that whole story, we'll answer it when we get there. Remember I told you that passage of Scripture is quoted more often than any other that I found? Listen to one of the places it's quoted. Romans 4, 23 through 25. The words, it was credited to him, were not written for him alone, but for us too. To whom God will credit righteousness. For us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, he was delivered over to death for our sins, and he was raised to life for our justification. And then a few chapters later, Romans continues, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it's with the heart that you believe and are justified. And it's with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Way back in the first book of the Bible, Abraham believes in God and he's made righteous. He's right with God because of it. Here we are in Romans towards the end of the Bible. And Paul writes, that wasn't written down just for Abraham. That was written down for you so that you could know how to get right with God too, by your faith. And then Romans, through Paul, specifically tells us the kind of faith we need to have. Believing in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, that he died for our sins and rose again. Confessing with our mouth, not being ashamed to admit it, to say so. Maybe you were raised in some sort of Christian home where you've believed in Jesus all your life, in your head. But maybe... He's not migrated down to your heart. This would be the morning, if you're ready, to take Jesus out of your head and put him into your heart. And it's not hard to do. You simply tell Jesus you believe in him and you're willing to follow him, that he will be your Lord. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, I'll follow you rather than do things my own way. I'm ready to turn from my sin I see sin as an addiction. There are types of manifestations of sin. Sometimes it's an addiction to other things as well. Alcohol, 
pornography, drugs, anger, buying, gambling. You just keep adding to the list because eventually it hit what you're doing. Sin has messed us up. It has jacked us up. Jesus has promised to deliver that from us if we will confess him as our Lord and believe in our hearts. So you might want to say a prayer, something along like, like this. Lord, I do believe in you. I believe you sent Jesus to die for my sins. I know he rose from the dead. And I've not had him in my heart. And I want to change that right now. I pledge to follow you with all my heart. Thank you for saving me. Amen.